Hey church family, it's good to be with you again this evening. Uh, our text uh, this evening will be Colossians 1, 9 through 14. So let's read that together. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. What a beautiful prayer we see here. Paul praying for the people, the believers in Colossians. And so as we looked uh, Tuesday night, um, looking at verses three through eight and how the gospel had transformed the believers there in Colossians and Paul was so excited to see uh, that the gospel had made its way that had transformed the hearts of the people and uh, in Colossians and um, and how the and we looked at the different aspects of the gospel uh, and how the how the gospel transforms and the fruit that comes from the gospel and so this tonight I want to look at uh, this uh, great prayer that uh, Paul prays for uh, the believers there uh, number one it says uh, that we have not ceased to pray for you asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding and so we see that that Paul wanted the believers to be filled with the, a knowledge a, a, a deep and thorough knowledge of, of who God is uh, we see in our society the the denial of absolutes, uh, particularly in the area of morals. If we look at our society, we look at uh, media, we look at our world, um, that without a source of authority or without some source of to provide absolute standards, uh, virtually anything goes. And so we, we definitely see that in our society. And so our knowledge then for, for believers as Christian is the authoritative word of God, which provides us our absolutes. And so those absolutes are based, the basis upon which all truth about God and all standards of faith and conduct are set. Um, the knowledge of those absolutes are the basis of the correct behavior and the ultimate judgment that should come from us. And so as we look at here and this word knowledge here that our knowledge, our absolutes come from the word of God. It comes from the knowledge of who God is. Um, and so um, as we understand where this knowledge comes from, that the, the knowledge comes from the Word of God, then we see all these different aspects play out here um, in these verses in which we will go through. So, um, as, a, as a result of the knowledge uh, of the Word of God, the knowledge of who God is, uh, then we understand uh, wisdom. And we understand what true wisdom is. We, under, we have a right understanding of our conduct, our morals, uh, of what we think, how we speak, how we act. And so uh, this prayer, uh, as Paul is praying, and we hear in verse 9, that they may be filled with the knowledge of, of His will, of knowing God, knowing the, the absolute truth, knowing these absolutes from the Word of God. When we know those, we have true spiritual wisdom, which comes from the Word of God, and we have that true spiritual wisdom, then we have correct understanding uh, of, of how we speak, our attitudes, our thoughts, and the way we act. And as we go on in verse 10, um, as a result of knowledge is to walk in a manner worthy. And so a a, a mind controlled by the knowledge and wisdom and understanding through the work in the Holy Spirit, the one's pattern of daily conduct is going to reflect that. And so our walk and is, is a manner of worthy, meaning our daily conduct is going to reflect knowing the true knowledge that comes from uh, the Word of God. Uh, we see going on, um, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him and bearing fruit in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God. And so a result of the knowledge that comes from God, that comes from the Word of God, uh, we're not only going to walk in a manner worthy, but we're going to bear fruit in every good work. And so because of our union with Christ, because of our abiding in Christ, uh, we produce fruit. That fruit may be praises to God, uh, the way our giving, um, our godly living, our attitudes, our, our fruit that comes from um, a, a true knowledge of, of God. It goes on says um, that 
bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So um, our growing in spiritual growth, our increasing in the knowledge of God is our growing in spiritual growth. And so some marks that we would see in growing in spiritual growth is a deep love for the Word of God um, and a, a, a pure obedience, obedience to be obedient to the Word of God, a, a, a large faith and maybe a greater love for, for God and a greater love for His people. Um, as we go on, it says, May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. And so as a result of knowledge, we have a walk in a manner worthy. We're bearing fruit in every good work. We're increasing in the knowledge of God or growing in spiritual growth. But we, say, we see that we are strengthened with all power. And so this timeless strength is that comes through God. Um, and that is a limitless power that comes from God. So we're strengthened not by our own, but through the power of God. But also we see that um, for all endurance and patience and joy. And so uh, what, a, what a wonderful prayer we see here of pray, God, uh, Peter, Paul praying for uh, the believers here of to have a, a knowledge, a spiritual wisdom, an understanding to walk in a manner worthy, to bear fruit in every good work, to increase in the knowledge of God, to be strengthened with all power, and that the people be have endurance and patience and all joy. And then we see here uh, just a, a great prayer of thanksgiving in verses uh, 12 through 14, that we're giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Uh, nothing that we have done to qualify ourselves, nothing that we have done to have the inheritance, but it's through God the Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, that we have all those. And He, God the Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. Amen for that. And so this, practically, as we look at this, hopefully this is a good prayer that we can pray for one another here at the church. It is a prayer that we can pray for our spouses, our, our children, uh, that they will grow in all these ways. And, uh, and what a great way that we can give thanks, reading verses 12 through 14, uh, for all that Christ has done for us. He has qualified us. He has given us inheritance. And He has given us redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And love you all. Hopefully this will be a great uh, benefit a prayer to learn for uh, each other and for your family.